Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting tutorial. If you are watching one of my videos for the first time, my name is Bülent and I have been doing video production for about eight years. And on this channel, I share tutorials about DaVinci Resolve, mostly about color grading, but I'm not a pro colorist. I just uh, share what I've learned over the years. So if you are interested, you can also check out my other tutorials. Okay, so as you know, there are two versions of DaVinci Resolve. One is free and the other is the paid studio version. Of course, the studio version has quite useful effects and tools. But today I want to show you a color grading using the completely free version of DaVinci Resolve 90. Because DaVinci is truly a powerful software and you can achieve amazing results using the free version as well. So in this tutorial, I won't be using anything that's only available in the paid version. Everything I use will be completely free. We will create a quick and beautiful cinematic look. Additionally, the node tree that I create in this tutorial can be used on all of your other projects. Okay. Let's drag these clips onto the timeline. The other day, while I was going through some of my old footage, I found some videos where I tried out the Siri 50mm 1.8 anamorphic lens in a store. It's an old lens and it also has an APS-C sensor. So when you want to shoot in 4K, it creates this vignette effect around the corners of the footage. But I think it has quite an impressive feeling to it. Of course, it comes squeezed when you first bring it into timeline we need to fix that first let's select all of them right click on any of the clips click on clip attributes click on the pixel aspect ratio menu and from here select 1.33 let's click ok yeah this way our footage returns to its original state as you can see we immediately capture that cinematic feeling maybe in the future i can make a review video not for this lens, but the newer version, full frame Venus anamorphic lens. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. Okay, let's move on to the color page now. I will continue with this footage. Since I will be working in the DaVinci White Gamut color space, I will first change my color management settings. Click on project settings, go to color management menu, select DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate for timeline color space. For output color space, select Rec 709 gamma 2.4 then click save now we can create our node tree first i will create a node let's place it towards the end i will use cst in our first node let's name it davinci white gamut and we will apply cst to this node i shot this footage with a sony camera so i'm selecting the input color space as sony s gamma 3 cine and for input gamma i'm choosing s lock 3 Let's set the output color space to DaVinci White Gamut and the output gamma to DaVinci Intermediate. Now let's convert from DaVinci White Gamut to our actual output Rec 709. Input color space is DaVinci White Gamut, input gamma is DaVinci Intermediate, output color space is Rec 709 and output gamma is gamma 2.4. This way we have put our log footage to a standard range. I will make standard adjustments like balance, contrast, saturation in between these two nodes and then I will also add any loop design elements after this node. Okay, let's continue. I'm creating three more nodes. First is my balance node, the second for my contrast and the third node is going to be for my saturation. Let's create one more node. I will add two parallel nodes to this and I will use these parallels for power windows. Let's name them quickly. Then I'm adding two more nodes here. I'm naming the first one Cineon and the second one is LUT. I will explain why I'm doing this in a second. Adding one more parallel node and one more node at the end. Actually, I almost forgot to add this. I will make general adjustments here. Let's name it global adjustment. I'll bring these down a bit. Let's call this node split tone and I will leave the one below empty for now. Finally, we will use a vignette. Okay, our node tree is ready. Let's click on the Cineon node. Since I will be using one of the film look LUTs available in DaVinci, I also need to use CST in this node. Let's drop that to the node. Our final color output is Rec 709. I'm inputting the same to the Cineon node, meaning input color space is Rec 709, input gamma is gamma 2.4, and then the output color space will be the same, which is Rec 709, but we will change the output gamma to Cineon Film Lock. 
Now we are ready to use our LUT. Go to the LUT menu, select Film Looks and drop the Kodak 2383 Film LUT onto the node. All right, it's already starting to look good. This is before, this is after. Very nice. Now let's adjust the exposure in the balance node. Let's increase the gain a bit and I'm decreasing the lift just a little. Also, let's make the temperature a bit cooler. This is before and this is after. Let's continue with the contrast node for now. I'm just going to create an S-curve using the curve tool. Let's bring down the shadow areas and lift the highlights. Maybe we can increase the primary contrast a bit as well. When we do before and after, we can see that we have increased the contrast levels. Now let's add some saturation. As always, I will use HSV for saturation. Right click on the node, select HSV from the color space menu, then deactivate channel 1 and channel 3 from the channels. Now let's increase the saturation level with gain and gamma sliders. This is before, this is after. All right, the colors are starting to come together. Before using the power windows, I will make some global adjustments. I feel like there is too much magenta in the footage, so let's fix that right away. I'm pulling the offset towards the green area a bit, and then I'm pushing the gamma in the opposite direction towards the red and magenta range. This is before, this is after. Yep, it's in a better place now. As you can see, we have cleaned up the magenta tone in the overall footage, but we can still adjust the shadows and blacks a bit more. So let's go to the log wheels and pull the shadows towards a bit more blue tones. This is before, this is after. Perfect. Now we can change the exposure levels in the different areas of our footage using power windows. Let's click on the window menu. I will choose gradient from here. This is a pretty handy tool. We can see it on the viewer when we click it. I'm dragging it upwards towards the darker area. Let's increase the softness a bit. You can do this by extending the arrow as well. Let's zoom out to see it a little bit better. I'm increasing the gain a bit and I'm adjusting the position properly. You can adjust according to your own footage, of course. Let's turn off the overlay. This is before, this is after. Amazing. This way, we can literally light up the scene the way we want. Of course, this is too much. I'm toning it down a bit. Let's take another look. Yes, this is much better now. Okay, we can move on to the other note. I want a different color on the right side of our footage. Let's do the same process again. I'm selecting the gradient and adjusting it. I've increased the softness as well. Now let's give it a different color with offset. Of course, I'm exaggerating it for now. I'm increasing the softness and lowering the opacity. This is before, this is after, not bad. But I didn't quite like this color. Maybe we can make it a bit more blue. Yes, I think this suits the footage a lot better. This way, we are directing our focus more towards the center. Let's add a vignette as well. I will select the last node and let's create a circle mask and invert it. I'm adjusting the size and the shape and decreasing the offset. Okay, I think our grading is in a pretty good shape right now. So we can make some minor adjustments on top of this. We can use this node for blur. Let's go to the blur menu. Let's unlink the channels and increase the blur level of the green channel just a bit, just very slightly. Finally, I want to briefly mention the split tone effect. You can do this by giving different tones to the shadows and the highlight areas. I will use the curve tool for this. Let's unlink the color channels. I'm selecting the green channel. I'm holding down Alt, creating a point. I'm leaving this point in this area. Holding down Alt again. I'm creating another point and pulling it down. Let's see this on the bigger window. Then I'm pulling this second point upwards like this. Now I will move on to the red channel. I will do the same. Create two points, placing one in the middle area and the other where we want the main effect. I'm going to bring this point just below the green one. Okay. Finally, I will do the same thing for the blue channel and I will pull this point opposite to the other two points. This way, 
only these shadow areas will be affected by these changes. I will quickly do the same for the highlights. Actually, since I did it quickly just to show you, the result isn't very obvious, but if you experiment with this technique, you will see the difference. It's barely noticeable in this footage as well, but I hope I could explain how this works. As a last step, if your adjustments are too strong, you can use these sliders to achieve a cleaner result. Finally, I'm creating one more gradient window and I will position it like this. Okay, I think we have achieved quite a good result. Let's see this grade on different footage as well. Alright guys, that's it for today's video. So you can achieve such results in DaVinci completely for free using your own footage. And I think this is incredible. If you have any questions, don't forget to mention them in the comments. And if you have learned anything from this tutorial, don't forget to like this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.